The next record I chose is Sorcerer by Miles Davis. Another case of I could have chosen one of 20 Miles records. Um, this is one of the records by Miles' famed uh, second quintet, second great quintet in, from the 60s with Ron Carter, Herbie Hancock, Wayne Shorter, and Tony Williams. This, I can't remember where this is in the chronology. It might be one of the middle to last ones, right. somewhere before, maybe before uh, Nefertiti. And I think this particular record is the first jazz LP I bought, maybe with the exception of the first Jocko solo record. And um, I was in New York City because my high, my college big band was doing a little mini tour and we had an after, we played a gig in New York City and I we had the afternoon off so the drummer and I, I'd never been to Tower Records before so the drummer and I went and I was looking for any, I was really excited to go there for the first time because I'd heard about it, this giant record store. And at the time I was well aware of all the gaps in my listening and my understanding and I wanted to find, uh, I really wanted to get more miles with both Paul, Paul Chambers or Ron Carter. And at that time CDs weren't really being reissued that rapidly. There was so much music and I couldn't find any of the 60s quintet on CD. Mm -hmm. And so thankfully I had to buy it on vinyl because years later I started really enjoying listening to vinyl. <laughs> and um, this is, um, a really fantastic album. I mean, they all are. You could choose any one of these uh, records by this band. ESP, Miles Smiles, Nefertiti. Um, this particular album on the first track, Prince of Darkness, which is an amazing song by Wayne Shorter, it's a really wonderful way to hear Ron's playing and to hear the way that he can negotiate through a song and deal with the pacing of a song and all these different rhythmic permutations that he gets into. Tony Williams plays it relatively straight throughout this track compared to a lot of other songs where he's kind of keeping the time on the ride cymbal and they're doing the song sort of like a their take on a samba mm -hmm. feel in yeah. this psychedelic way that only this band could do and um, yeah Ron like pretty much runs down every possible way you could approach this song but in such a musical way but it's so free and yet so precise at the same time as playing and the sound is so beautifully recorded you hear every nuance of his playing and um, the whole album's like that, except for uh, Nothing Like You, the last track on the second record, which is not my favorite track on the record. <laughs> but it's, um, it's, and it was actually recorded years before, I believe, with a totally different band. So, but the whole rest of the album is, is, is essential miles listening, in my opinion. And even something like, Nothing Like You, if, if that's true too. But um, Sorcerer by Miles Davis, one of my favorite records by Miles or anyone. So next, we have Thelonious Monk uh, live at the It Club. I could again, I could have picked any number of Monk albums. This is a particularly one of my particularly favorite uh, Monk records. I think I first heard this well, a track from this record on a compilation called uh, "The Composer." It's an amazing live document of his working band at the time, which had uh, Larry Gales and Ben Riley, and of course Charlie Rouse is from the '60s. And I think this was kind of like a golden period for Monk in terms of his playing because he suddenly, after having not been able to play throughout the 50s because he lost his cabaret card, was suddenly able to perform again and had a, the Columbia record contract and was touring constantly. And the band is just one of my favorite bands, one of my favorite rhythm sections. He had a lot of rhythm sections that I loved. I also love the rhythm section with Frankie Dunlop and um, Butch Warren. I love the one with Wilbur and Shadow Wilson, obviously, but they didn't really record that much. Yeah, this is this is just, uh, a, they were just, there's such a vibe to this entire record, for lack of a better word. Um, uh, Monk's solos also, if you just listen to eight bars of one, it's like a whole universe. The way he improvised, I think if I had to pick one piano player that I'd want to listen to the rest of my life, it'd probably be him. 
despite what everyone loves about his com composing, and of course he's one of the most important composers of all time, he, I think he's kind of underrated as a piano player. This is a really incredible document of, of what this band sounded like live. It's not necessarily the most hi-fi recording, um, and it's, this is uh, something that was discovered I don't know if it was discovered later, but it hadn't been put out. It wasn't, wasn't put out until the 70s, and it's a double album. So, um, and they do, you know, pretty much the standard Monk repertoire. Blue Monk, Well You Needn't, Round Midnight, Rhythm and Ing, um, Five Spot Blues, Bemcha Swing, Nutty, Evidence, but it's just an amazing album. 